Good morning, grade three and four. How's it going today? All right, so we're gonna keep going on all of our lessons here. Thanks so much for the work that you've done so far. Keep up the good work and we'll keep plugging away here, getting better and better at all of this as we're going along. Uh, grade four, you have math tests today. Take your time. Go to a quiet spot. Make sure you're not going to be distracted. All right, uh, use your good thinkers. If you have a question on your test, I want you to call me, okay? I really do. Um, then for grade three and four together, uh, your watch the sky, you should be finished with that. I'll go through the answers uh, for that with you in a moment. So if you're not finished, pause on the before I get, start to give you the answers and I want you to take the test on that today. And then begin to read uh, in your social studies, your Wisconsin history, the territory of Wisconsin. Do all of that on that worksheet. And remember last week how we learned how to be an active reader and we read about that. If you, it's okay to read that again and again, get those skills in your head, that will help you. Today in that lesson, um, as you read in the territory of Wisconsin on the back there, it tells you how to be a critical reader. That's different, okay? Critical reader, active reader is important. Being a critical reader is important as well. So really pay attention to that. And again, uh, to get things in our head so that they become just second nature, we have to sometimes do them again and again and over and over and practice them no matter what you're reading to be able to have them be part of just your everyday life then, okay? Make you a better reader, all righty? Um, and then we'll do all of that. I'll give you the answers Friday morning and you'll do the test for that on Friday, okay? Uh, reminder, um, as we're doing the watch the sky thing, I do want you to report to me somehow um, what are the phases of the moon each night, okay? Even if you can't see it, um, you can look it up and say, what is the phase of the moon in our area? Um, but then also let me know. I couldn't see it. I had to look it up um, because it was overcast, whatever that happens to be, all right? But let's report on what are the phases of the moon that we see each night, okay? Um, and you can do that in several different ways. If you want to send me a video like you did with your weather reports, that's fine. Or, um, and you could do it even just Tuesdays and Thursdays with your memory treasures, okay? We'll figure out a way to do it. All righty. And then Joanna, at the end, I'll just go through a little bit of the parentheses and compatible numbers that you have for your lesson today, but uh, nothing too difficult. All right. Uh, so if you're ready, you can have out your um, Watch the Sky publication and let's go through our answers so that you make sure you have these correct uh, before you take your test today and as always it's okay to use your publications as you're taking your test so number three a burst of energy on the sun is a solar flare s-o-l-a-r-f-l-a-r-e number six across this occurs when the earth gets between the moon and the sun and really try to memorize these two what makes the lunar eclipse what makes the solar eclipse so when the Earth is between the moon and the sun, Earth is in the middle, then it's a lunar eclipse, okay? L-U-N-A-R-E-C-L-I-P-S-E. -E. You can't see the moon because the Earth is between the moon and the sun, okay? Um, number one down, this occurs when the moon gets between the Earth and the sun. Then it is a solar eclipse, S-O-L-A-R-E-C-L-I-P-S-E. So then the moon is in the middle and it kind of covers up. And you know how that happens. You would say, well, how can the little tiny moon cover up the sun? Well, remember how we can take our thumb and as long as we are the correct distance away, we can cover up something huge like your brother's head, okay? Um, and uh, that, so that's how that works. Number two, the study of celestial objects is astronomy, A-S-T-R-O-N-O-M-Y. Number four, this word describes things in the sky like the stars, the moon, and the sun. Celestial. C-E-L-E-S-T-I-A-L. -E -E I like that word. It's pretty. Celestial. Number five, a tool to figure out latitude. The astro astrolab, and that is A-S-T-R-O-L-A-B-E. All righty. And then the next thing we'll do is numbering the moons to put them in order. These were not in order, so you for sure needed to have the number underneath. If you had the name or the title for what that picture showed, that would be even better. Um, so if you didn't do that, don't count it wrong, but just uh, add that to it. Go back and add it to it. So what would the first moon there in our row be? That would be a number four, a waxing gibbous. Remember, waxing means getting bigger. Number eight would be our second moon there. That's a picture of a waning crescent. That's the eighth phase of the moon. The next phase is seven. And that's the third quarter. 
The next one there is phase number one, and that's called the new moon. So the one that's all black, the black circle there, that would be a number one underneath it, new moon. Number two, right after that, is number two, the waxing crescent. So those two are right in order, waxing crescent. After that one is number five, the full moon, and that one looks the most white. Okay, that's the fifth phase of the moon, and that's called the full moon. After that, we have one that's in order, and that's number six, the waning gibbous. Remember, waning means getting smaller. Waning gibbous. And then our last picture of, is the third phase of the moon, and that one is called first quarter. Okay, so kind of memorizing what those moons look like and what they are called and what order they are in. So you can notice um, if, you, if you went in your publication, um, right here, this little mini lab showed you the order and the titles of each of those phases of the moon, okay? So in that mini lab that you had right there. Alrighty. Okay, so remember, taking a test today. Um, Joanna, thanks for sending me some of your videos of the mini labs that you did. Uh, fourth grade boys, go ahead and do some of those mini labs and either uh, tell me about it, that you did it, or send me a video. That would be great. Uh, the next thing that I want you to do is start reading Wisconsin Becomes a Territory, okay? So again, uh, this one is going to talk about being a critical reader on the back. Maybe read that first before you read your publication and put those skills into practice as you're reading. Um, read it on the Studies Weekly's website, and then it might be a good idea to just read it again. The more times you read something, the more it gets in your head. Remember, it's okay to read something more than once, two, three, four times. That's important. All righty. Uh, do the back. You have a crossword puzzle to do. And then on Friday morning, I will give you the answers for that, and you will take a test on the territories of Wisconsin. All right, third and fourth grade, you're finished with me for right now. Uh, my third grader, if you want to keep listening, uh, please do. All righty. Did you know that it's only one more day till your birthday? That's exciting. Um, so here we have work on parentheses and compatible numbers. And you'll notice as you're going through the examples that for some operations, did you realize you're a surgeon? You've been doing operations every day in math. Oh my goodness. Um, as you're doing those operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, some of them, like subtraction and division, it does make a difference where your parentheses are, doesn't it? When we're doing addition and multiplication, it doesn't necessarily matter where those, or it doesn't matter where those parentheses are. And then in the last example, it's talking about using compatible numbers, using numbers that are easy to work with, not always rounding just to the nearest dollar, but on that one, they rounded to the nearest 25 cent. And yet that still made it really easy to figure out that problem. Make sure you call me if you have any questions and have a great day.